Hello and welcome back everyone. So today in this lecture, I'm going to be talking about the various ways in which we can classify the impaction of third molars. Well, the classification of impaction of mandibular and maxillary third molar is very similar with the very few differences between the two, which I will be discussing later onwards. So first, let's start with the mandibular third molar impaction. So the majority of classification schemes are based on the radiographic appearance of the impacted third molar. And most of these classification essentially helps the dentist in assessing the difficulty of extracting the impacted third molar. So the first classification is based on the angulation of impacted third molar. This classification provides us with initial assessment of the difficulty of the extraction. And it is also the most commonly used classification with respect to planning a treatment. So this classification is based on the position of the long axis of the third molar with respect to the long axis of the adjacent second molar. So basically the position of the impacted third molar is compared with the adjacent second molar. So based on this, there are four main classes and I will be naming them in the order of the increasing difficulty for extraction. So the first is the mesoangular impaction. In this type of impaction, the crown of the impacted third molar is tilted in the mesial direction towards the adjacent second molar. So this is the most common type of lower third molar impaction accounting for about 43% of the total lower third molar impaction cases. And it is also the least difficult to extract. The second is the horizontal impaction. In this, the impacted tooth is perpendicular to the long axis of the adjacent second molar. So this accounts for approximately 3% of the total lower third molar impaction cases and it is more difficult to perform extraction on. So the third classification is the vertical impaction in which the impacted tooth is parallel to the long axis of the adjacent second molar. So the horizontal impaction accounts for about 38% of the total cases of the lower third molar impaction and it is the third most difficult to perform extraction on. So the fourth is the distal angular impaction in which the long axis of the tooth is in the distal direction to the adjacent second molar or the long axis of the impacted tooth is positioned away from the adjacent second molar. So this type of impaction accounts for about 6% of all impacted cases of lower third molar impaction and is also the most difficult to extract among the four. Simply because the withdrawal path of the tooth is into the mandibular ramus and therefore requires significant surgical intervention to extract. So apart from these four angular impaction, there is another very rare impaction, the transverse impaction in which the tooth is in the absolute horizontal position but placed in a buccolingual direction. So the occlusal surface may either be towards the buccal side or either the lingual side. So this type of impaction may be difficult to see with normal panoramic radiograph and may require a cone based CT scan to visualize the position of the tooth. So this was the classification according to the angle of the third molar. So now the next classification is according to the relationship to the anterior border of the ramus. This classification is also known as Pell and Gregory classification or also known as the Pell and Gregory 1, 2 and 3 classification. This classification is based on the amount of tooth covered by the bone of the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible. So an impacted tooth is classified into class 1 if the mesiodistal diameter of the crown or simply the crown of the impacted tooth is completely anterior to the anterior border of the ramus. So it is the easiest to extract because of much easier accessibility to the impacted tooth. An impacted tooth is classified into class 2 if the half of the crown of the tooth is covered by the ramus of the mandible and therefore the tooth cannot erupt completely and the distal aspect of the tooth is covered by the bone, making the extraction very difficult. But if the impacted tooth is completely embedded within the ramus of the mandible, it is considered as the class 3 impaction. So this type of impaction offers the least accessibility and therefore is the most difficult to perform extraction on. So this was the Pell and Gregory 1, 2 and 3 classification. So now we move on to the next classification which is based on the relationship of the impacted tooth to the occlusal plane. This classification was also proposed by Pell and Gregory and is known as the Pell and Gregory A, B and C classification. So this classification is explained on the basis of the depth of the impacted third molar compared with the height of the occlusal plane of the adjacent second molar. And the degree of difficulty of extraction is assessed by the depth of the impacted tooth and the overlying bone covering it. 
therefore the difficulty of extraction increases as the depth of impacted tooth increases since the tooth becomes less and less accessible as it goes deeper into the bone so we start with the first class the class a so in this class the occlusal surface of the impacted tooth is at the level or nearly at the level with the occlusal plane of the adjacent second molar so the class b impaction is when the impacted third molar is between the occlusal plane and the cervical line of the adjacent second molar therefore the impacted tooth is almost half embedded within the bone and finally the third class is the class c impaction in which the occlusal surface of the third molar is below the cervical line of the second molar and therefore completely or almost completely embedded within the bone so for determining the difficulty of an impaction of an impacted tooth and to explain the degree of impaction these three classes can be written and used together for example a mesoangular impaction with a class 1 ramus and a class a depth is very easy and straightforward to extract but as the ramus relationship changes to class 2 and the depth of the impacted third molar changes to class b the degree of difficulty increases several folds similarly a horizontal impaction with a class 2 ramus relationship in a class b depth provides a more serious challenge and finally the most difficult of all extractions of an impacted tooth is the distal angular impaction with a class 3 ramus relationship at a class c depth so this type of impaction is a serious challenge even for the most experienced specialists so the preceding classification were classifying the third molars on various factors that made the extraction of impacted third molar either easier or difficult but there is this one classification which is based on the nature of overlying soft tissue and is used by most dental insurance companies and therefore this classification is also important for the dentist to know so it classifies the impacted third molar into three types the first is a soft tissue type or the soft tissue impaction in which the height of the contour of the impacted tooth or the most bulbous part of the impacted tooth is above the level of the alveolar bone in which the tooth is placed and the impacted tooth is also covered by a layer of soft tissue this is the most straightforward out of the three extractions but can also turn out to be complex depending on various factors the second is the complete bony impaction in which the tooth is covered by the soft tissue but some portion of the height of the contour of the tooth is below the surrounding alveolar bone So the third and the final is the complete bony impaction in which the tooth is completely encased in the bone and is not visible even after raising the flap. So this classification is very commonly used but holds no relationship to the degree of difficulty of extraction of impacted third molars or the complication that the procedure may cause. The classification of angulation ramus relationship and the depth of impacted third molars including other factors such as age root morphology are more relevant when devising a treatment plan when going for the extraction of impacted third molars so the classification for maxillary impacted third molars is essentially the same with some minor differences regarding the angulation three major angulations exist with maxillary impacted third molars but the difficulty for extracting the maxillary impacted tooth is exactly opposite as that for mandibular impacted third molars so the first is the vertical impaction which accounts for about 63% of the total cases of impaction for maxillary third molars and is the least complex in terms of extracting the impacted tooth The second is the distal angular impaction which accounts for about 25% of the total cases of maxillary third molar impactions and is also considered less complex in terms of extraction. While the third which is the mesoangular impaction accounts for about 12% of the total cases of maxillary third molar impaction and is the most hardest to remove because many factors like the difference in bone thickness presence of second molars etc contributes to the less accessibility to the impacted third molar and therefore making it more difficult among the three while the other impactions like the transverse horizontal or inverted are very rarely encountered and account for about less than 1% of the total cases of maxillary third molar impactions So the soft tissue impaction is also essentially the same as that for mandibular third molar impaction that is a soft tissue impaction the partial bony impaction and the complete bony impaction so there is no class 1 class 2 or class 3 for maxillary third molar impaction simply because there is no ramus when we talk about the maxillary third molars while the pell and gregory class a class b and class c classification holds its value when talking about the maxillary third molar impactions and their classification is also essentially the same as that for mandibular third molars that is according to the depth of the maxillary impacted third molars 
So this ends my lecture on the basic classification of impaction of third molar teeth. I hope everything is clear to you. If you still have any confusion or any questions, please do comment down below and I will try my best to answer them. So please take care of yourselves and I'll see you people next time. Goodbye.